First at four, a Taylor man is formally charged in connection to a deadly dispute over free firewood. Plus, the man charged in a deadly road rage shooting in court today to determine if there's enough evidence for trial. Paula. Hi there, Jason. Well, frontline workers and medical personnel say they are now fighting something as formidable as the COVID-19 virus itself. As the numbers tick up, I have information from the front lines. Hi, Ben. Paul, it's our second day in a row with unseasonably cool temperatures and low humidity, which means it's about it for that. We'll look at changes starting tomorrow right now. First at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jason Colthorpe in for Karen today. First at 4, a Taylor man is formally charged in the shooting of a father who was killed in front of his teenage son. 73-year-old Eddie Hicks is accused of shooting and killing 46-year-old Barry Balestri in a dispute over free firewood. This happened June 15th at a home on Cornell near I-94 and Telegraph in Taylor. Hicks is charged with second degree murder, manslaughter and felony firearm. Coming up at five, the local four defenders are breaking down new body cam video released today by police. One man is in the hospital after a shooting on Detroit's west side. It happened around one this afternoon on Tireman near Prest. Police say a 32 year old man is critical. Police are investigating to see what led to this shooting. The man charged in a deadly road rage shooting in Troy is in court. 27 year old Terrell Josie faces several charges, including murder for the July 5th shooting. Prosecutors say Josie was the passenger in an SUV that followed Detroit Fire Lieutenant Francis Dombrowski. When they got to the Shell gas station on Rochester Road, things escalated and it's alleged Josie opened fire. Dombrowski died at the scene. Today's preliminary exam will determine if there's enough evidence to move this to trial. Josie has pleaded not guilty to all the charges. Now to a local four update. We're getting a look at the man arrested for leading Southfield police on a chase in a stolen car. Corian Purdue Duckett faces multiple charges, including fleeing and eluding, as well as an assault and resisting arrest. On Monday, Southfield police attempted to stop a stolen truck. And it led to this a high speed chase. You can see it here on the dash cam showing officers speeding through intersections trying to catch up. And then here is the arrest. A judge set Purdue Duckett's bond at $2,000. All right, time to check in with Ben for our forecast. Nice. Ben used a word yesterday that I feel applies today. Crisp. Crisp, yeah. yeah. I mean, this time of July, we rarely see humidity uh, go this low, and that's what we've got for two days straight now, which means uh, it's going to be coming to an end very shortly. 76 out in Adrian, one of the cool spots, but Detroit still not quite getting to 80 with that cloud cover a little bit thicker uh, at the mid and high levels. This is all coming out of the north. We've even seen a couple sprinkles here in the north zone, but I think a lot of us are going to wait till tomorrow to get our chance of rain once it gets here. We'll have multiple shots as we get into the start of the weekend. Here's how the rest of the evening looks with temperatures in the 70s. Still pleasant, but that humidity goes up tomorrow. Heat starts increasing as well. And of course, shower and thunderstorm chances will be around. We'll talk all about it and see how much of the weekend will be dry in just a few minutes. Jason. Got it. R losing the crispiness. I got it. Multiple major websites were down today during a widespread global outage. The sites are back up now, but there are new concerns with the fragility of the entire system. Kimberly's in the newsroom with this. And Kim, do we know what caused the outage yet? Hi, Jason. Yes, yeah, so the, the problem was caused by an issue at Akamai. It's an internet services company based in Massachusetts that's apparently used by a ton of big companies. So just to name a few websites for Delta Airlines, Costco, Home Depot, Lowe's and American Express were down for about an hour around noon. Even click on Detroit was impacted. The, the widespread outages caused some very real world problems. Uh, CNBC is reporting Delta customers could not track flights from home. About 3,500 Airbnb users reported having issues while the site was down. Nearly 1,500 Home Depot customers were having similar issues. This is according to outage tracking website down detector. Uh, this is the third similar outage in just the past two months. Cyber experts say this shows how a problem with one internet service can have a ripple effect 
affecting millions of people. So reps for Akamai aren't really commenting on what caused the issue, nor are they saying anything about foreign inter interference. But as soon as we know something, we'll of course let you know. Until then, Jason, we'll send it back to you. All right, Kim, thanks. Sure. State health officials confirmed two cases of the highly contagious Delta variant in St. Clair County. And in both cases, neither person had been vaccinated for COVID. On the vaccine front, the state's vaccination rate is now at 62.9%. Tomorrow, the state will release the latest coronavirus case numbers and deaths. The U.S. Surgeon General believes our nation is in the grips of an epidemic, one that is equally as dangerous as the COVID-19 pandemic and its variants. A lack of trust, willingness and due diligence to seek science and fact over fiction when it comes to the COVID vaccines and the virus itself. Paula Tutman joins us live from Henry Ford Hospital in Macomb County, where a cardiologist is sounding the alarm. Hi, Paula. Yeah, hi, Jason. You know what? She certainly is, and she is not the only one. This really is the talk of the medical industry. I mean, when you hear the word epidemic to describe misinformation and disinformation, and uh, frontline workers believe this is costing lives. No one visits a cardiologist for elective or cosmetic reasons. By the time you're referred to a cardiologist, you potentially have something life-threatening or life-altering going on in your health, which is why vax and virus misinformation and disinformation are so concerning to Dr. Letlitha Rudraya, a cardiologist at Henry Ford Health System, Macomb. I start off my day by asking them if they've been vaccinated or not, and some people get angry and they just storm out of the office. What she is seeing and hearing from some of her clients Conspiracy theories about the vaccine and the most concerning that the virus 17 months after it started infecting Michiganders and killing more than 4 million people across the globe. Some of her patients still believe the COVID-19 virus is a hoax. Despite all the deaths we have experienced, despite the statistics out there, people still believe this is a farce, which is very unfortunate. But also deeply concerning to her is that her patients are at greater risk of dying if they get COVID. Most cardiology patients are sick as it is. They're older, they're diabetics. Most of them are having high blood pressure. They're overweight. And we know over the year and a half that these are the risk factors that actually is the worst outcome when they get infected with COVID. She and healthcare providers across the state and the nation are perplexed, but also deeply bothered about the level of disinformation, which is deliberate, and misinformation, which is generally misunderstandings of the science. It's not controversial in the medical world. It's only controversial on social media. So I don't know how to steer these people in the right direction. I think that people are reading misinformation on social media. Unfortunately, there's just so many sources out there that are full of misinformation and in many cases, outright lies. Bob Riney, the chief operating officer for Henry Ford Health System. We should all be on the same team and we've turned it into something divisive. He says close to 100% of the COVID patients currently in his various hospitals are unvaccinated. This Delta variant is very, very contagious. And our lab positivity rate, you know, went from 1.5% to 3.6% just this week alone. And at this point, he believes disinformation and misinformation are as dangerous as the virus itself. But what I tell people all the time is that, you know, um, social media vehicles are great for social purposes, but they are not intended to be used for research. Yeah, you know, where you get your information is really, really critical, particularly with this Delta variant, because if it does get hold, it could actually morph itself to, to actually threaten those people who are vaccinated against this strain of COVID-19. So we're talking about a different kind of variant. Also, Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, also deeply concerned, sent me a statement this afternoon saying that getting the COVID-19 vaccine is our best defense against the virus and the way we are going going to end this pandemic, they too urge that people get their information from certified science-based places and not their friends and social media. Jason, this, this is critical at this point. It's absolutely astounding, Paul, just the war on science. And, you know, I'm glad you talked to the cardiologist because when they tell you to do something, your doctor says you have high blood pressure. I don't go to social media for the second opinion. You go to a doctor. Yeah. Paul, absolutely. So yeah. Good point. Very important information there. We are back on the floor with a legendary rock and roll band set to return to Ford Field, much to the satisfaction of Metro Detroiters. We'll tell you when that's going to happen. 
Plus surprising numbers from the latest jobs report. Why experts say the labor market is not yet back to normal. But first we have a help me.